One of the premises of Local Motors is to operate with continuous input from their online community, so make sure to check out their website. You can also find information there on how to catch the rally fighter in person. Speaking of catching something in person, we're all so excited that F1 is returning to Canadian soil this season. And now that the season is a few races in, let's check in with Rene Fignon for more. All right, 2010 Grand Prix season, what is different this year? Well, first of all, there's a major rule change for 2010 being a refueling ban. So we used to see the car stop for fuel during the races, the Formula One races, the Grand Prix, and this is no longer the case. So the cars got to start the race, so that's a little more than 300 kilometers with the amount of fuel needed to reach the end. So that's about 200 liters, so 160 kilos in the car at the beginning of the race. Obviously, the cars need to be redesigned completely because how do you fit 200 liters yeah. when, when they used to have uh, 90 to 100 liters? Do you think that's a purposeful change to make what's happening in F1 reflect more what's happening to the greater public in the automotive industry? I think I think it is, and I think that the, uh, the car manufacturers have asked so that Formula One is, close, is closer to reality. It's really pushing the auto industry to come up with uh, more efficient uh, engines and to work on, on uh, electronics. To the technology. Work, ex exactly, the high end technology. So they want to work on something that it can be related to the everyday car or of the uh, of the customers. Okay, maybe the biggest story for us, obviously, is the Grand Prix is returning here to Montreal mm -hmm. after an absence last year. What do you think these new regulations and what's happening right now is going to affect? What can we expect here in Montreal? It's going to make a major difference because, like we said, there's no refueling, so they start the race with the fuel, uh, with a full tank of fuel. The problem is, is that the cars are so heavy, and Montreal is a track that is extremely difficult on brakes, very hard on brakes. So imagine now with 160 kilos more, it's going to mm. get, it's going to be very difficult to get to the end. So it's going to be a race of strategy, telling the drivers to go a little slower at the beginning and then pick up the pace, go a little faster, go a little faster when the, the amount of fuel decreases into the fuel tanks. Do you think the Red Bull team has any sort of advantage because of the Frozen One event that they did here in Montreal? <laughs> I don't think so because it was it was so cold when they uh, when they staged it and uh, but you know who knows in Montreal it can be very cold in June so uh, let's hope uh, not <laughs> no let's hope not but it can be also very very warm and that causes difficulties to the team because sometimes Bridgestone bring tires that are not suited to the temperature mm. we have in Montreal so it can be uh, quite of a challenge to uh, to get to grips with the weather we're gonna have in Montreal June so it could be anyone's race. It can be, although the Red Bull team has been pretty dominant in Melbourne and Australia, and this, it, it is the same kind of stop and go track. So the car in, is nimble, and since they, uh, they're using the Renault engine that is a little softer on fuel consumption, they could break in, uh, on the starting grid a little less fuel than the other team. So it can make a difference. Have to wait till June 13th to find out, I guess. Mm -hmm. Counting the days.